Many students fail accounting, not because calculations are hard, but because they don't understand accounting concepts and conventions. In this video, I will explain them so simply that you will never forget them. What are accounting concepts? What are accounting concepts? Accounting concepts are the basic assumptions on which financial statements are prepared. The basic assumptions on which financial statements are prepared. Remember this mnemonic, Jemoka. Jem Mok. Car. So the fourth G stands for going concern, going concern concept. The E stands for entity concept or business entity concept. The M stands for money mailbag concept. Money mailment concept. Or simply monetary concept. Then the second M, we've considered this today. Then we have the next M, which is matching concept. Machine concept. I've told you that the money mailbag concept can also be called monetary concept. Then we have O, which stands for objectivity. O, objectivity concept. After O, we have C, which is cost concept. Cost concept. Or historical cost concept. Historical cost concept. Then, after the cost concept, the next letter C stands for consistency. C, consistency, concept. And you can equally have this under convention. If you don't want to have it as a concept, you may equally have that as convention. So after that, we have letter A, which stands for accrual concept. Accrual concept. Finally, we have R. It stands for realization concept. We will examine these accounting concepts one after the other before we consider the accounting conventions. So number one is going concern concept. Going concern concept assumes that the business will continue operating in the possible future. It assumes that the business we continue operating in the foreseeable future. So this concept also assumes that assets are not valued at scrap value and liabilities are not demanded immediately. That is on the basis of the going concern concept. After going concern concept, we have entity concept. I've told you that entity concept can also be called the business entity concept. The, this concept assumes that the business is separated from the owners. The business and the owners are treated as a separate entity. They are treated as a separate person. They are treated as a separate entity. E.g., owner's personal expenses is not equal to the business expenses. So they are different, not the same. The personal expenses of the owners 
cannot be included in the financial statement of the business because they are not the same. Number three, we have money measurement concept. Remember, I've told you that the money measurement concept can also be called the monetary concept. This concept assumes that only items that can be measured in money are recorded. It means the financial statements can we only record items that can be measured in money. So it means anything that cannot be valued, that cannot be quantified in money, will not be recorded in the financial statement. Example, staff loyalty. You cannot quantify the staff loyalty in money. Therefore, it will not be recorded in the financial statements. But the assets, liabilities, and equity of a business can be quantified in monetary terms. Therefore, those ones can be recorded in the financial statement. Number four, we have the matching concept. Matching concept. Matching concepts assume that expenses are matched. Expenses are deducted from revenue they generate. The concept states that you deduct the expenses from the revenue they generate in order to get the net income. If the sales commission is charged in the same period as sales. Number five, we have objectivity concepts. Objectivity concept states that accounting records must be based on verifiable evidence. Evidence you can verify. So the accounting records may, must be based on verifiable evidence. I repeat, accounting records must be based or must be based on the verifiable evidence. E.g., evidence such as invoice, receipts, bank statements, etc. The next concept after the objectivity concept is the cost concept. I've told you that the cost concept can also be called the historical cost concept. This concept states that assets are recorded at their original cost price, not the market value. Assets are recorded. Assets are recorded at the cost paid, not the market value. E.g., land bought at 5 million stays at 5 million unless they are revalued. So it means if a land is acquired for 5 million naira, if you want to record the same land in the financial statement, the value that must appear in the financial statement must be that cost of 5 million. So you, it, the value can only change, the value of the land can only change if the land are revalued. Seven, consistency concept. Consistency concept states that accounting methods should be applied consistently from period to period. Once a method has been chosen, that method must be applied consistently from period to period. The purpose of that is that it allows comparison of returns between one period and the other. Then the number eight, we have Akura concept. Akura concept states that Income and expenses are recorded when they are earned or incurred, not when cash is received or paid. Income and expenses are recorded when they are earned or incurred, not when cash is received or paid. Number nine, we have realization concepts. Realization concept states that revenue is recognized when goods are sold or services are provided. Revenue is recognized when goods are sold or services are provided. What is then is the accounting conventions. Accounting conventions are rules and practices developed over time to guide accountants. The rules and practices developed over time to guide accountants. So the easy mnemonic for accounting convention is Kumo. The mnemonic for remembering the accounting convention is Kumo. The first letter C stands for conservatism. Conservatism convention. Another word for conservatism is prudence. Prudence. O for offsetting. Then M for materiality. 
materiality. Then O for objectivity. A disclosure convention. So, conservatism. Conservatism can also be called prudency convention. It requires accountants to anticipate losses, but never to anticipate profit. Accountants to anticipate losses, but never profit. So, example, pro make provision for doubtful debts. Provision for doubtful debts are made in compliance with the prudency concept, so as not to recognize an anticipated profit or do not recognize unrealized profit. The next convention is offsetting. Offsetting, that is no netting. No netting. That is, assets and liabilities should not be netted off. Assets and liabilities should not be netted off. E.g., debtors and creditors should be shown separately. That is, you should not net them off. You should not subtract them from one another. The next convention is materiality. Materiality requires that only information that can influence decisions should be disclosed. So you should disclose only those information that can influence decisions. Examples, missing 500 naira may be ignored, but missing 5 million naira should be disclosed. We are only 500 naira is missing. We may ignore that if it is not material. But if 5 million naira, if it is missing, then you should disclose it in the financial statement. Then the last uh, letter is letter O, which is objectivity, which is a disclosure convention. So all relevant and reliable information must be disclosed. This convention requires that a captain should disclose all relevant and reliable information. So that is, you should include notes to the accounts, you should include the accounting policies as part of your financial statements. Remember the Nemodis, the Moka for accounting concepts and Kumu for conventions. If you remember these two words, you can answer any question on this topic. If this explanation helped you, like the video, comment more simplified topics and share it with a friend. Thanks for watching.